Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Outlook. In this module, I want to have a look at mail options. So first of all, let's get a new email. So what I'm talking about is this tab here, options. These are the things that you can do to a mail individually. You can also change these in options under file and this options and mail options there which i'll come back to in a minute so these ones if you change these they will be uh, applied to all outgoing emails but individually you can apply them so for example on this one you can see i've got the bcc field activated so bcc stands for blind carbon copy as opposed to ccc which is carbon copy so if you send in a multiple email to multiple recipients you should put them in there so other people can't see who that email went to if you put them in the cc line everybody knows who else got this email but looking across the top there you've got some very simplistic um, options so i've got this one so i've added that so when the person gets this message they will get that voting option so if i just send that to myself quickly won't bother with the subject you should see the voting options on the message coming in so if i open that you've got vote approve, approve or reject i'll reject send the response okay let's close this email down so let's get a new email so looking along um, the options tab we've got the voting request and then you can select these options you want a read receipt a delivery report and a read receipt this is under the tracking block i'm just going to take that off so that would be on an individual email just this email now a delivery report is when the email gets to the server to the recipient server so they they have got no control over that however this one read receipt they do have control of that they can opt out of sending that back to you so that is a more accurate one at least you know the server's picked it up that one they can say no to but you can have it on if you want so i'll take them both off now this one save sent replies save sent items to and they can designate a different folder than the default one which is sent items so you can just create a another folder with different or several folders with different names in delay delivery so if i want this message not to go out until last thing at five o'clock i can set that in there and then have replies directed to another person so again you could send a bulk email out at five o'clock on friday and get all the replies sent to a colleague while you go on holiday now all of these are under the more options feature and if i click on any one of these or this little arrow it will take me into the options and you can see there are a few the same sort of things but a few more as well so if i just go through these from the top you've got importance which is on normal I don't know anybody that would put that onto low, but you've got that option. Sensitivity, you've got these options. It doesn't actually stop people opening this email. It's just a, an awareness that this is a confidential email. If you've got confidential emails in, you should be using security settings, which would be part of your company policies and may also be third party software. So don't ever think that by putting that to private or confidential, that is actually doing anything other than putting that word on an email. You've got the voting buttons there, which I've just done. And again, you've got these two. So that's just a replica of what's on the ribbon, the tracking part of the ribbon. So you don't need to come in, in here to do that. There's have replies sent to. So what you would do there is you tick that and then there's you. So one would come back to you, but then you add colleagues' names and they would appear there. So if you didn't want them to come back to you at all, you just get rid of your name out of that box. 
tick that off do not deliver before a time so you've got time related information so this is set to today don't deliver before five o'clock so it might be a, a new product that's coming out at five o'clock and you're giving a, a sales email so i don't want that so i'll take that off and similar to that you could have it expiring at a certain time so this is only valid if i set this at nine o'clock in the morning this is only uh, effective until five o'clock that day and if that sits in if this sits in somebody's inbox and it's after five o'clock the email will have a line put through it so anybody looking at that will see that it's no longer valid i'll take that one and there's the save copies of sent messages to the default folder which i showed you up there down the bottom there you've got your categories which you would have to set up which i've set up in my calendar i did that earlier so you can set this to a whichever category you want and the color comes up for it you can add contacts to this from your contacts list all of these to the mail i'll just close that one off now if i close this email down I'm not saving that and going to options so that was individual emails through mail options this is going to be set for all emails here's something that you might want to have a think about if you're going to be sending tables or images you want to make sure you've got it on html or rich text which is like word if you've got it on plain text which a lot of companies do have when you receive a table that's formatted in word it just comes as a big list so it's very hard to read so that's um, the default option that i always have You've got spelling, always check spelling before you send. Always have that ticked. And then you've got spelling and autocorrect options that you can set up through this option here. There's the, the autocorrect options, similar to Word. Lots of different examples, plus you can add your own. Just okay that and pull this down, oh, okay it. So I've ticked spelling, check spelling before sending. You can have signatures. So this is a one place that you can do signatures. So you can see that I've got two signatures and they're named and you can have them on replies if you want. To create a signature, you just click on new and then type in whatever you want to be in the signature. So just click OK to that. So coming down, you've got stationary and fonts. I use conditional formatting and through views, through the view menu for my email. So things come up in different sizes, but you could also use this themes and uh, change the themes for returning emails and things like that. I'm not going to do that. And then reading pane is what it says on the tin. And then these are just general options. You can just tick these on or off. But the ones that would then be permanent these ones open replies uh, and forwards in a new window close the original message that's what i want to tick on on mine and then you've got these options where you can when replying include the original text etc etc the tracking options i was right down the bottom the delivery receipt so if i tick that that means every email i will get one of them likewise if i tick that every email I sent I'll get a read receipt and I've got this set which other people can also have set never to send a read receipt so they're not if even if you tick that and they've got that ticked you're not going to get one so it's a bit hit and miss whether you get one there but you'll always get that so that's a worthwhile one to have ticked if you're thinking people are just ignoring your emails or not or not getting them Further down, some of the general options, but I'll do for now. I'll click OK to that. So back to the email, and there's the other place you can do signatures straight in the email itself. It brings you to the same box. Let's cancel that off. So options, you've got options on the front screen. If you want to color the email, you've got page color options there. And all these ones have already gone through. That's in, in addition to all the normal things that you can do on your email through the other tabs across the top. And you can see business cards and things like that that you can bring in. Um, format text, embed documents, 
whatever you want you can do all that but this was just basically about these options and more options that you get through this box but when you click these arrows they go they always take you to the same place so if you don't see it on the ribbon it will be in this properties box but that's all i want to talk about in this session so hopefully it'll have been of use to you and i'll see you in the next one thank you for your time